Welcome to IMTS. My name is Kathy Webster and you're watching IMTS TV. There is a lot to see at the show and a lot of people ask, where should I start? Here are two tips to help you navigate IMTS. Number one, know that IMTS is spread across four buildings, north, south, east, and west, all under one roof and linked by the Grand Concourse. Number two, we group technologies into 10 categories called pavilions. The 10 pavilions help visitors compare similar technologies, products, and services. The East Building houses four pavilions and our partner, Hanover Messes 4, co-located shows on two levels. Level two, open from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. On level three, open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The East Building houses a restaurant, a beer garden, and the IMTS store, where we'll be giving away an exclusive item from 1 to 4.30 p.m. while supplies last. The West Building houses the Additive Manufacturing Pavilion, the Tooling and Workholding Pavilion, and AMT's Emerging Technology Center, focused on additive manufacturing. West Level 3 is open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the West Level 3 Annex is open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The North Building, open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., houses fabricating and lasers, gear generation, abrasive machining and sawing, and several special attractions. AMT's Emerging Technology Center focused on digital transformation, GIE Media's Today's Technology Center, Modern Machine Shop's Top Shops booth, SME's Smart Manufacturing Hub, and the Smart for Student Summit, located on level one. And finally, the South Building, open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., is home to the Metal Cutting Pavilion. For a full list of building hours, visit the About the Show tab on imts.com. And remember, download the IMTS mobile app to access your My Show Planner, to find exhibitors, make your itinerary, and navigate from one exhibitor to another. Have some tips? Share yours with us using the hashtag IMTS2018. And now it's time to wake up with our IMTS TV host, Emily Barda, as Good Morning IMTS starts right now. Wake up IMTS, it's Wednesday, September 12th, 2018, and this is Good Morning IMTS. Now, live from the IMTS TV studio in Chicago, Illinois, here's your host, Emily Barta. Good morning and welcome to day three of IMTS 2018, where dreamers and doers connect. I'm your host, Emily Barta, and this is Good Morning IMTS. The Tech Spotlight is a look at new products, innovative technologies, and emerging trends in the manufacturing industry found at IMTS 2018. In today's episode, Hannah Combs speaks to us about the die in the day scavenger hunt and the future of additive manufacturing. I'm Hannah Coombs with IMTS TV and we're here at AMT's Emerging Technology Center dedicated to additive. I'm here with Craig Blue, Director of Energy Efficiency at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Craig, we hear a challenge associated with additive is production time. We've got the scavenger hunt, the die in a day scavenger hunt here at IMTS 2018. Tell me a little bit about what that says for the speed of production and what that says about the future of additive. So at Oak Ridge National Lab, it's something that we've been focused on heavily. That's size, speed, and cost. All three are really critical for, for manufacturing. What you're gonna see in the IMTS show this year is us designing dies in the booth here, uploading them into the cloud, downloading it into yet a different booth out in the hall with uh, Lincoln Electric as well as Wolf Robotics where they're going to take those CAD uh, drawings of the dies and actually make the dies inside of two to three hours. There'll be digital scans of those, they'll be uploaded in the cloud, then it'll be downloaded into yet another booth, another location inside of the hall where Mazak will be doing the machining of the dies. 
Additional scans will be done on that, upload, and then download in yet a third part of a hall where they'll put it into a press with Wabash and Carver and actually make composite parts, uh, material provided by IACME, the Composite Institute. So literally inside of one day, you're gonna see the design of a die, the fabrication of the die, finishing, and actually parts coming out the backside. And tell me a little bit about the collaboration with the different companies um, and how visitors can follow the process here. So collaboration is really key to our success. Uh, the vast majority of what's been developed on the additive side really comes from the manufacturing demonstration facility at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, but we're as good as our partners. Our partners bring a lot of capability. In the case of Wolf and Lincoln, that's where you're going to have the hardware that you actually do the deposition of these steels. Uh, in terms of the supply chain, we work with a variety of companies with the, the composites. When you look at the scanning and the machining, we'll work with uh, Mazak. And then actually in the forming, again, we go back to the press, Wabash and, and Carver. If it wasn't for that entire supply chain, we're only doing part of it. We have to be holistic if we want this to go commercial and really save energy, cost, and time for you know, the United States and customers. And tell us, how can, visitor, how can visitors see this in action at the show? Okay, so every day when you come in, uh, early in the day, you'll see the designing of the, the, the die. Then we'll have a schedule and the various booths that you'll go to for the subsequent phases and the ultimate culmination in parts. So they can go in Wolf and actually watch parts being grown. They can go in Mazak and actually watch the part being machined. And then they can go to Wallbash and Carver and actually watch the composite parts being formed. So they'll be throughout the day, and then every day we're doing a different part. And you guys have a pretty cool hologram display here in the uh, ETC that's showing some of the research and the development of these products. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's really important. Um, it's a visualization of really the artificial intelligence. A lot of people, when they think 3D printing, it's hit the easy button. Well, that's not really the case. Uh, it's very complex, everything from your CAD drawing to your tool path, how the material goes down, how it solidifies, uh, the ability to actually watch this real time, detect porosity, actually go back and correct for porosity, residual stress, coupling really the design, modeling, in situ characterization into real part qualification. And that's being visualized in that facility. And finally, what kind of cost advantage or really competitive advantage does this kind of speed of production and does this scavenger hunt, what does it say about the future of additive? So I think this is an outstanding opportunity of us onshoring some capabilities that we've lost. If you look over the last 10 years, we've lost over a third of our dye manufacturing capability to Asia. Um, if you look at dyes, they're typically you know tens, hundreds, and even sometimes millions of dollars. They take months to even years to make. A typical new uh, car, it's two years, $200 million. We're looking at decreasing those times and those costs by an order of magnitude and making things domestically, you know, from really the, the die to the part. So it's a tremendous uh, capability and innovation cycle. When you can cut your production times by an order of magnitude, that's a tremendous opportunity to rapidly innovate. This is Craig Blue with Oak Ridge National Laboratory at the at AMT's ETC dedicated to additive and I'm Hannah Coombs with IMTS TV. Hello there. Welcome to IMTS 2018. Did you know that there are conferences happening all around McCormick Place? The Top Shops Workshop is where shops of all shapes, sizes and specialties connect at IMTS. Hey Bill, tell us more. Well, Top Shops is an extension of Gardner's benchmarking service to our industry. It's a great way to see where your company stacks up in shop floor uh, services, in human resources, some of your business solutions. Ultimately, it's a great way to see where your company can gain, how you're doing compared to your competition, and maybe learn a few things you can take back to help your business evolve. So we'll see you at the Top Shops workshop happening on Thursday in the West Building. I would now like to introduce Penny Brown, the Director of Advocacy and Communications for AMT, the Association for Manufacturing Technology, and the Governor of Illinois, Bruce Rauner, as they discuss the value of manufacturing to the American economy. Penny. Thank you, Emily. Good morning, Governor Rauner. Good morning, Penny. Great to be with you today. It's an honor to have you here at IMTS. Well, very excited to be here. This is one of the greatest uh, shows in the world. 
Uh, we highlight manufacturing and technology, and it's important to all our prosperity. It's very exciting, and record attendance this year. Yes, so talk to us a little bit about this. Illinois has a very robust manufacturing industry, very large manufacturing firms in the state. So what's the impact of the industry for Illinois? Yes, uh, Illinois is a leader in manufacturing. We're the 17th largest economy in the world. We're a world leader in manufacturing. Uh, we're the center for manufacturing in the United States. We're also the center of transportation for the United States, and so we're a hub for um, getting products to market for, throughout North America. Um, in our manufacturing sector, uh, we employ well over half a million um, Illinoisans in the manufacturing uh, space. Um, wages in manufacturing are 15 percent higher than they are for, in, for comparable uh, education level in the non-manufacturing sector. And our prosperity is so fundamentally built upon making products and delivering them around North America here from Illinois. It's a key to our prosperity. So what do you see as kind of some of the industry's key challenges and what is the state doing to address those? Well, uh, first and foremost, it's about people. It's about the workforce. It's about talent um, and a pipeline of leaders who are well educated, who've got the technical skills to be major contributors and leaders in the manufacturing sector. So we are investing heavily in our education yeah, system in Illinois. Uh, we're investing heavily in our apprenticeship programs, our training programs, our vocational and technical schools, our community colleges. We want the best trained workforce in the world right here in the state of Illinois. Uh, we've got outstanding people here and that's the first and foremost, that's always an ongoing challenge and priority for us in Illinois and in manufacturing. Uh, as well, transportation infrastructure. It's critical that as we're making high quality innovative products in the manufacturing sector, we be able to deliver them uh, to their customers around North America quickly and efficiently. Uh, we have the largest, busiest airport in America here at O'Hare Airport. Uh, we have nonstop flights around the world from O'Hare, multiple flights every day to Germany, to Japan, Asia, Europe, around the world. Um, we have an incredible network of highway infrastructure. We're the center of the interstate highway system for America here. And we're the only state in America that has all seven class one railroads uh, all converging here. So we can get products to market efficiently and effectively. Um, the other uh, key for uh, manufacturing success is technology. We always need to be innovating. We in Illinois are investing in our university system. Uh, the University of Illinois is a technology leader in the world. Uh, they have one of the greatest computer science and engineering schools anywhere in, in the United States. Um, and we are investing, helping them expand and integrating them here in Chicago, in Rockford, in Peoria, um, in Champaign-Urbana, and making sure that our uh, university system is, is supplying a pipeline of great talent uh, to our manufacturing firms here in the state so we can continue to be leaders in innovation as well. Wonderful. Um, so how does the state attract and retain top manufacturing firms? Well, by making sure that we are fundamentally attractive and competitive in terms of our structure. Investing in education and training, investing in infrastructure, investing in innovation, and also making sure that our cost of doing business is reasonable. Always working to reduce the tax burden on our businesses, always uh, working to reduce the regulatory burden and the red tape and the restrictions. Uh, we're making progress on that every year. We want to make sure that we are very supportive of free enterprise, uh, free trade, and a, uh, a business environment that's very conducive to manufacturers growing and staying very competitive. So coming up on October 5th, it's Manufacturing Day, a yeah. national event where all the companies open their doors and really try to show students and the public what the industry is all about. So what's the state here going to do to celebrate that? Well, we will have a huge day of celebration. We are so proud in Illinois to be the center for manufacturing in the United States. Uh, we'll be hosting students here, encouraging young people to look at manufacturing for their careers. Um, careers in manufacturing are extremely exciting, well-paying, and unlimited in terms of their potential. Uh, we'll also be inviting manufacturers from around the United States and around the world to come and help celebrate here with us. Uh, we'll be holding events and uh, special seminars. It's going to be a great day to celebrate the, the prosperity that's created, the quality of life that's enhanced by advanced high technology manufacturing. 
and the technology is really worth getting excited about. So I know you're going to go take a tour and see some of the really exciting things we have here this year. What gets you excited about manufacturing personally? Well, um, I was an investor uh, for 30 years before I became governor of Illinois. I came here to McCormick Place. I came to the IMTS show on numerous occasions as a private citizen and now as governor. Manufacturing is the core of the prosperity for the people of Illinois and the people around the world. In advanced manufacturing, blending technology and innovation with manufacturing products and bringing young people into that space, it's the most exciting, dynamic part of economic uh, prosperity for everyone. And I'm proud of our leadership role here in Illinois in enhancing manufacturing everywhere. Governor Rahner, thank you for being here today. It's great to be with you, Penny. Thank you very much. Back to you, Emily. Thank you, Penny. On tap for today are numerous activities and events happening throughout McCormick Place. There are several practical learning sessions at IMTS 2018, including two for job shops happening today. At 11 a.m., marketing master Steve Miller will discuss Uncopyable, creating an unfair advantage over the competition. And at 12.45 p.m., a panel of experts will hash out the unending search for qualified labor. Both sessions will be held in the West Building, room 181 BC. And if you register for both sessions, you will save some money. So be sure to visit imts.com for more information and to register before they begin. The Making Chips podcast today is on social media marketing for manufacturers. Learn the tips and tactics used by the most prolific social media influencers in the metalworking community at noon today on the main stage in the Grand Concourse. Today's topic at the Hanover Mesa Solutions Theater is Intelligent Drive Technology, Fluid Power, Smart Power Transmission, and Fluid Power Solutions. These presentations are free to all IMTS and Hanover Mesa visitors so be sure to visit the East Building on Level 2, right in the middle of the Expo floor at booth 121847. Today is Day 3 of the IMTS Conference. Session categories include Manufacturing Process Innovations, Alternative Additive Manufacturing, Plant Operations, Quality Inspection Metrology, and Systems Integration, Industry 4.0, IIoT. Be sure to check out the IMTS conference located in the West Building in rooms 192, 193, and 194. The Industrial Laser Conference is also happening today. Topics will include the industrial applications of lasers and will show you how to apply lasers to increase your profits and efficiency. Be sure to visit the Industrial Laser Conference in the West Building, room W190. Applied AM, where additive minds meet, is a half-day application-focused symposium that spotlights the latest 3D printing industry trends. Sessions begin today at 12.15, following lunchboxes available at 11.30 in the West Building, room W183. The Global Automation Manufacturing Summit includes a networking luncheon, keynote address, and four educational sessions exploring issues such as cybersecurity, operational change maintenance, and robotics. GAM starts today at 12.15 p.m. in the West Building, room W196, B and C. And if you would like more information on these or any other attractions found at IMTS 2018, just be sure to visit imts.com. IMTS Shorts are a short look into tips and tools that you can use to guide you through the expo floors and enhance your experience at IMTS 2018. On today's episode, Katie Carey talks to us about the IMTS mobile app. Feeling lost in the 14 miles of aisles at IMTS? Download the IMTS mobile app for all the most important show info right at your fingertips. Access your My Show Planner on the go, find exhibitors, and follow interactive maps. You can even connect with us on social media and watch IMTS TV live right in the app. Download the IMTS mobile app today at the Google Play and Apple App Stores. Be sure to enable notifications to receive the most up-to-date show info.
the IMTS mobile app, your guide to IMTS 2018. Good morning from IMTS TV. I hope you have a good day. Create a Skate is a curriculum that teaches material science to students, explains where products are come from, and provides the satisfaction of making something out of nothing with your own hands. And this year, Create a Skate has a presence in the Student Summit. Jules McGuire spoke to Graham Hargraves of Mastercam to find out more. Hi, I'm Jules with IMTS TV. I'm here with Graham Hargraves with Mastercam, and we're talking about the Create Escape curriculum today. So, Graham, tell us more about this curriculum. So, one of our uh, one of our industrial customers, his name is Paul Schmidt. He's a veteran of the skateboard industry. He's made skateboard decks for the pros for over 20 years, maybe 30 years. His way of giving back and trying to get students interested in manufacturing because through skateboarding, which is his passion obviously, is this program where he teaches material science, he brings out different types of woods, composites, metals, and he, he just shows the students the different properties that make up these, these materials. And then he takes, he takes it a step further and brings out a skateboard and shows them how to cut a skateboard. So it's a cool project, it's obviously project based and he is, he's really just aiming to show students what they can do in manufacturing. Um, sometimes, you know, there's a negative stigma about the industry, which, you know, dirty, dingy, not very, not very fun, not making very cool things, and he's trying to dispel that. Oh, that's awesome. So how can we find out more about this at IMTS? So at IMTS, you can come down to our booth in the Student Summit, which is right here. Uh, it's booth 215, 210, and Every single day, he'll be doing four presentations in the booth from 11, 11.30, 12, and 12.30. Oh, that's awesome. So they can come down here and learn more about the Create Escape curriculum. And if someone can't attend this week, how can they find out more information? You can find out more information on www.mastercam.com. You can check out all of our social media pages. Um, pretty standard there. Awesome. You can also check out createescape.org. Awesome. So tell me about a specific lesson with the Create Escape curriculum. So what he's going to do is he will take a small piece of, I believe, maple, and he's going to have the kids actually break it and just show the material makeup of that wood. And then he'll compare it with other types of woods with different densities and just try to get the kids interested in different types of wood and different types of materials in their makeups out there. So it's a hands-on learning experience. It's, it's, it's very quick. And then he goes into the skateboard side, which is what the kids are really, really interested in. Oh, that's awesome. So why is it so important to get manufacturing and engineering into the classroom? Well, we all know about you know the skills gap. Um, there's a lot of older generation retiring right now, and we need to fill those highly skilled jobs that you know they're, they're leaving out in the industry. There's, you know, in the next few years, there's going to be a huge backlog and a huge need to have people coming out of school with skilled with the skills to be able to kind of plug and play and get into the industry. That totally makes sense. So what else is Mastercam doing at IMTS? So at IMTS, we have a lot of stuff going on. We have, like I said, the Create Escape presentations. We have at 11.30 every single day, a, a instructor-driven certification presentation in, in the next booth over. Then we also have an industrial booth up in the East Hall on, on the lakeside. And up there is where we're talking to industry and showing what's new in Mastercam 2019. And also, Thursday, we're doing a, a customer appreciation day where we're rolling out our new Masters of Cam campaign. It'll be a website that's coming out soon. And it's where any user out there, any Mastercam user, can go and upload their work and share, share their passion. And then we, we kind of help promote them and, and the amazing things that they're doing. So all throughout the day on Thursday, We'll be giving out shirts. We have an event at night. If you're interested, stop by the booth and, and we can give you a little more information on it. That's so cool. So let me loop back around real quick. Can you tell me a little bit more about the learning lab that you're having about certification? Sure, so like I said, it's, it's driven towards instructors. Um, I'll be doing the presentation at 11.30 and it's just to show instructors the importance of certifying students and preparing them for the industry. Uh, when they're certified with Mastercam, they have a, a pretty good chance of 
employment right outside of um, their education because we are the most widely used CAM software out there, so the most shops are using it, the most schools are teaching it, so once again, we're helping you know, fill that skills gap. That's excellent. So if they can't make that, where can they find that more information? More information on that, they can also go to www.mastercam.com. Awesome. And then one more thing. You mentioned Thursday is the big day yep. for the Master of CAM, which I think is a really cool way of involving the community. So is there anything else people need to know about that? Um, well, Thursday's the day. Stop by the booth. We're giving away shirts. We're, we're, you know, we have a lot of other giveaways. We're just trying to let people know what's coming down the pike with this program. Um, and our goal there is, is, you know, it's our 35th year in business. We want to, we want to thank all of our customers out there for getting us to where we are and, and launching us into the next 35 years. So it's just us saying thank you. It's, it's a big appreciation day and, and it's beyond just Thursday, you know, it's, it's the entire week, but that's, that's really the main day. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. And that was Graham Hargraves with Master Cam and I'm Jules McGuire with IMTS TV. <laughs>
it's not going to have an impact on, on the... On units, number of units. Not at all. Okay. I want to come back to cars, to driverless cars, but uh, a little bit about the challenges that you're seeing. You're out there with all the automotive manufacturers, you travel the country. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing the market facing? Well, although we have all heard and we all know that uh, the EPA is going to be rolling back the regulations in the United States that we were looking for in terms of fuel economy for 2025, mm -hmm. um, the issue is that every single automobile manufacturer is a global manufacturer, okay? Everyone is participating in, in global competition, okay? so. You know, BMW, for example, has its hugest plant in, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, from which it is building all of the sport utilities and crossover vehicles that are sold everywhere in the world, right? So, BMW, a German company. Well, the challenge is for BMW that they're still, in, still selling vehicles in, in Europe, they're still selling vehicles in China, and those two areas are not backing down on their standards. So you, you have a challenge whereby all manufacturers need to achieve what are stretch goals in terms of reducing emissions or getting greater fuel economy. So we might think that we're getting a break in the United States. That isn't happening because General Motors still has to compete in the world. Ford has to compete in the world. Um, FCA is is a, you know, arguably a European country or a com right. com company, excuse me. So. You know, you've got that challenge. You've got the challenge of um, how do you work your investment in terms of getting to these autonomous vehicles because that takes a whole new suite of skills that you may not have had before and probably don't. And so you have to hire a whole bunch of people from Silicon Valley, which are probably a little bit more expensive than the guys in and around places like you know Detroit and Cleveland and uh, historic automotive places. So you've got that challenge and. Um, you know, and, and overall, I mean, the, the big challenge going forward is is that there is um, data that show young people are not that interested in buying cars. So how do you make something that is intrinsically appealing to them? Right. So, right. you know, you've got it on the technology front, you've got it on the emissions front, uh, you got it all over the place. So it isn't easy being in this business. <laughs> well, let's stay with those CAFE standards, the corporate average fuel efficiency standards. As you noted, they seem to be easing a little bit. Um, anything that's going to do to benefit the price point on vehicles? Do you see that it impl any implications there? Meaning, will the prices go down because they have to? They do... don't have to make this investment in the standards. But see, but my point is, they do have to make the investment. Oh, for oh. their up bond. Because because again, everyone develops global platforms. Okay. Okay. So there's no longer indigenous platforms that you would build a car. For America now, you might make the argument that if you look at the sales of of light duty pickups, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of F one fifties that are rolling around in uh, you know small towns in France or in Japan or elsewhere, right? So you could say, okay, you know, you've got that, but everything else, okay, is 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 pretty much being sold somewhere else. So so whether it's a you know, it's, it's a Camry that is being built in Georgetown, Kentucky. Well, you know, they want to sell a Camry other parts of the world. Um, Honda's doing it, you know, Mercedes is doing it, Ford is doing it, General Motors is doing it. So it's it's almost like a false savings. I see. It, 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 it's, it's still going to cost the companies. Okay. And, and they've still got to do the work. they still got to do the engineering. they still got to do the manufacturing. Now, there could be some calibration that they do that modifies the um, performance of the of the vehicle for the U.S. market, mm -hmm. but again, you know, you got the suppliers that are providing this stuff, and they're providing it right across the board. Very good. Um, electrification, mm -hmm. seeing a lot more of it, seeing a lot more Teslas on the road. Uh, obviously, Tesla's got some challenges in meeting their production goals, which uh, maybe has them waiting around for others to catch up, but. What do you think uh, is going to be the impact of electrification on automotive? All right, so there's, there's, a, there's a distinction that you have to keep in mind here, okay? So there is electrification and then there is electric vehicles, okay? Clear that up for me because okay. I, don't, I don't know that distinction. Okay, so, so basically um, I will guarantee you that by 2023 essentially every vehicle that you're going to find in a showroom anywhere across the United States 
or Canada or Mexico will be electrified. What this basically means is that you'll have a supplemental electrical system that will improve the performance of the vehicle. So you'll have a smaller engine, but you'll have a little extra boost that is going to come from the electrified part. Now doing that means that they're able to reduce the amount of gasoline that's being burned because you're using electricity, which you're getting, say, from your regenerative braking that uh, takes, takes the friction and, and turns it uh, through a generator into to power. Electric vehicles, on the other hand, would be like a Tesla, okay? So, so this means no internal combustion engine, no transmission, no drivetrain as we know it, no radiator as we know it, a whole bunch of things all go away, right? So, so this basically changes the game for automotive manufacturing. Now, you know, to the aforementioned question of Tesla, well, okay, Tesla is still building cars as we know them, right? They still have a sheet metal outer, mm -hmm. they still have seats, they have steering wheels, they have pedals, they have radios, they have glass, they have, you know, axles and, and so on. I mean, so it's, it's manufacturing as we know it. So they're still stamping, they're still welding, they're still assembling. Okay, there are those activities, but when you look at the powertrain part, which is a huge part of automotive manufacturing. I mean, the number of components that go into an engine are staggering, right? right? And the precision with which these things are being made, I mean, the bores in your cylinders, the, the, the ODs of pistons, I mean, it's just amazing. And a lot of that's going to go away as, as we go to uh, electric vehicles. Electrified vehicles, not much of a change, okay? Mm -hmm. But electric vehicles, big, major change. Now. My 12-year-old son's a Tesla freak. Mm -hmm. He's got Tesla everything. We have to test drive them at least once a month. <laughs> but who else do you see making a play? As we talked about Tesla's uh, production challenges. That's mm -hmm. no secret. They seem to be making some progress there. But in the meantime, who else do you see among the major automotive manufacturers that, that is introducing cars that are starting to ease into the main market a little bit? Um, okay, so, so right now, um Last week, for example, um, Mercedes announced a new crossover that they're going to be doing. Um, they have a new sub-brand called EQ, mm -hmm. and so they'll, all of their electric vehicles and electrified vehicles, both, right, will, right. will be EQ. So, so they in, in introduced this new EQC, which is a small um, compact crossover, so Mercedes is getting into it. Um, Porsche is, is going to be coming out with a vehicle, a four-door sports sedan that is awesome I and mean, it's just gorgeous haven't you know it's not out there yet haven't had the opportunity to drive it that's going to go straight after the, the the model s i mean uh you've got the chevy bolt which is highly competitive with the tesla model 3. different price point it's it's it, it's a car that a normal person can afford yeah. okay a person who doesn't have you know silicon valley wealth i mean right, it's right. it's uh you you know you, you it's uh it, it, it's a wonderful car, um, got good range. I mean, that's the problem with electric cars. The, the range is too small for most 225, people. 225, 250, 275? Well, the, the Bolt will get you up to about 230. Okay. okay. But by and large, if you're looking, so Nissan has had the Leaf on the market for a number of years. And so the, so the new Leaf gets you about 110, yeah. 130. I mean, which Doesn't give is, you confidence to travel far yeah, from I mean, home. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. thing is, is that it, it, it's, you know, they've done the math. None of us need more than that, mm -hmm. okay? and you're able to, to charge it, but yeah. for those of us who have grown up on gasoline and, and gas stations on every you know four corners, um, that seems scary to us. And, and I drive these things all the time and it's scary to me, so it's uh, understandable. Well, along those same lines, we talked about Tesla, there's other cars that are doing this, but more and more we're seeing the advanced uh, driver assistance programs, mm -hmm. cars that are doing more things for us as right. a driver, thinking for us a little bit. Um, what do you see is the impact of that? And are we going to see more and more of it at all price points, or is that still the exclusive of the higher, the exclusive domain of the higher end cars? All right, so, so, so you, it, ADAS is the acronym that, that people, you'll hear ADAS people what talking about. So it's Advanced Driver Assist Systems. Okay. Okay. But if you think about, so the SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers, have, has basically categorized vehicles in five levels. Okay, so you get level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. Okay, most of the cars in the parking lot outside of McCormick Place right now are level two vehicles. It has some 
driver assistance, mm -hmm. okay? So for example, you have the blind spot warning in your uh, side view mirrors, that's one of those things, okay? okay? Um, arguably, if you, if you have um, adaptive cruise control, the cruise control that, you know, yeah. works. My car does, okay. Love so, it. so you've got that. So when you get to level four, level four is basically when it is a driverless vehicle and it, it, you, you will not be the driver. You will be driven in this vehicle. Yeah. But the thing of it is, is that level four vehicles are geofenced, meaning that they'll go out and say, okay, we're going to map an area, we'll know everything that's going on in that area, and that car will, will drive within that area only under specific weather conditions, right? So if there's a blizzard, this thing isn't going out there. But there's level five, which is all conditions everywhere, okay? We're going to see level four. You and I are going to see level four. Maybe, let's see, this is 2018. Um, maybe by the next show, okay? Maybe in 2020 we'll see this. Certainly we'll see it in 2021. So if we're doing this in 2022, you know, we'll look out the window and they'll be driving around there, yeah. okay? But what's going to happen is, is that will they be for people like us? Well, chances are what's going to end up happening, initially at least, is the fact that they will be a service. So this will be Lyft, this will be Uber, mm -hmm. it'll be something like that. Because they'll be running this fleet and they'll be using this vehicle for more hours in the day than normal cars drive. So they're coming, they'll be here before you know it, and it's real. Well. My son is probably more excited about it than I am. I still like to get behind the wheel and head out, but, but he's jacked about it. Gary, it's always a pleasure. I love seeing what's coming around the corner, and I'll take you up on that offer to talk here in 20 and 22, so put okay. it in Outlook, okay? All right, thank you. All right. This has been Shop Talk. Our guest today has been Gary Vasilash, the Editor-in-Chief of Automotive Design and Production Magazine. For IMTS-TV, I'm Bill Herman.